Now, he talks about resilience as um, comprising three main factors or these three main um, components that help build resilience, or at least how it develops ideally. One is stress. Again, resilience is there because stress is there, right? If there was no stress, there would be no need for resilience. We would feel happy. We would feel uh, joy. We would be practicing self-care essentially naturally. But since there's stress, you know, that, that, that essentially promotes the need for resilience and resilience strategies. Now, uh, what Bruce Perry talks about is that the, in the ideal settings, it's a moderate level of stress. So if your stress is too low and it's not that bad at all, resilience won't naturally develop. If your stress is too high, then we're looking at what we were talking about in the last slide, which is essentially the fight, flight, and freeze responses, right? Then we're getting into the realm of trauma. But a moderate level of stress with some predictability in your environment and some controllability of the stress, that's what essentially develops develops resilience. So what is the relationship between resilience and self-care? Again, so uh, resilience is what's needed when there is a stress. Self-care are the strategies that help over time build that resilience. A very, very simple definition of it is essentially the practice of taking action to preserve one's health over time. That could be your physical health exercise, it could be your emotional health, it could be your mental health, your social health, your spiritual health, right? Essentially what it is, is you are intentionally over time practicing self-care or, or, or doing activities that facilitate self-care. And over time, self-care strategies that are put in a schematic that are predictable and done routinely over time, that's what builds resilience. 